which fast food restaurant do you think has the most locations worldwide? McDonald's. 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 It's not actually McDonald's. Subway? Subway? Yeah, it's Subway. How'd you know? What? I just guess there's loads. Yep, there are loads. As of 2017, McDonald's had 37,241 locations, and coffee favorite Starbucks has 27,339 locations worldwide. But both are beaten out by the world's most popular sandwich maker, Subway. Subway founders Fred DeLuca and Peter Buck opened the first store in 1965. The chain grew to 33,959 locations worldwide in 2010, surpassing McDonald's. It's up to nearly 44,000 today. So how is it that Subway beats even McDonald's by nearly 7,000 locations? It's partly because it's much cheaper to start. The average cost of opening a Subway franchise in 2018 is $147,000 to $321,000. Compare that to McDonald's starting cost of $1 to $2.2 million. Subway staffers don't have to cook anything, so they require less costly training, insurance, and pricey kitchen appliances. Because of Subway, franchising is what it is today. It, Subway really put franchising as a business model on the map. Combine that relatively small starting cost with a years-long aggressive marketing campaign that successfully pitched Subway as a healthy alternative to other fast food, and the sandwich shop became a lunchtime juggernaut. But Subway's omnipresence can't hide a major flaw. It lags far behind its competitors in actual sales. It consistently falls far behind McDonald's, and it lost second place to Starbucks in 2014. Its sales have fallen every year since 2014, at a record 4.4% in 2017. Those franchisees aren't making a lot of money. I mean, the average store makes something like 450,000 in sales a year, and if you take out their 12.5% going to Subway, that's really tough. Shortly after this slump began, in 2015, the longtime face of Subway's marketing campaigns, Jared Fogel, was convicted and jailed for possessing child pornography and participating in child sex tourism. The restaurant chain suspending ties with him after FBI agents and Indiana State Police raided Fogel's home Tuesday. Fogel spent 15 years as the face of Subway, inextricably linking him to the sandwich maker's brand. He was sentenced to 15 and a half years in prison in 2015, and Subway hasn't had a comparably successful marketing campaign since. Sales continued to fall, and Subway began closing stores. Over 350 in 2016, over 800 in 2017, and another 500 in 2018. So what's happening to the world's top sandwich chain? One reason could be Subway's relative lack of innovation over the last few decades. Starbucks and McDonald's spend millions to evolve along with changing consumer tastes. Since its founding, McDonald's has consistently introduced new products, including McCafe coffee drinks and fresh beef patties for its quarter pounder. After a slight slump in sales in 2014, McDonald's introduced its popular all-day breakfast menu. Uh, McDonald's, you know, was kind of falling asleep at the wheel, too. They weren't doing a lot of innovative things. The all-day breakfast was a brilliant, brilliant move. The company also updated its interior to be more sleek and modern, and introduced table service, a mobile app, and touchscreen ordering. Starbucks, for its part, deliberately cultivates a cozy coffeehouse atmosphere, with design studios located around the globe to cater to a specific city or region's architectural tastes. It also regularly introduces new products to entice customers, like teas, non-dairy milk alternatives, and recently, Starbucks Reserve Roasteries, new cafes featuring in-depth coffee experiences and food from the Italian bakery Princi. These ventures don't always work, like Starbucks' failed excursion into Australia, but they show a pattern of experimentation that has led to massive increases in sales every year for the past few years. But Subway? Go into almost any Subway in 2018, and its atmosphere and food will seem just the same as in the year 2000 or 1990. And that's because it is. While its competitors evolve and new competitors arise, Subway stagnates. They have built an amazing brand. But what got you there is not the same as what's going to take you into the future, and I think that's what they realize. In the summer of 2017, Subway announced a rebranding campaign called Fresh Forward. It aimed to create smaller, sleeker stores to entice younger customers with touchscreen ordering, displays of fresh vegetables, and USB charging ports. 
But this rebranding hasn't come with the kind of menu overhaul some say it needs to keep pace with changing consumer tastes, including calls for hormone-free meats, locally sourced produce, and gluten-free bread. I went into a refresh Subway the other day myself, and I couldn't tell it had been refreshed. The store doesn't look that much different to me. Uh, there are uh, new spices, and I believe the word harvested may have been used, and I guess it's uh, fresher. I haven't heard it's coming from the menu in that redesign. It's in the four walls which is very different. To me, it's menu, then four walls. Additionally, Subway recently announced the departure of CEO Suzanne Greco, but some experts remain skeptical. Some new designs and fresh leadership might not reverse Subway's slump if the real problem is sluggish sales of the same old food. That's just, your product is boring in this day and age. I don't see a bunch of young women in an office building say, let's go downstairs uh, to Subway and order through the sneeze guard. They're just not gonna do that. Until Subway fixes that, I think they're gonna continue to struggle.